Um, I think by Brian's own admission that he was always a, 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 a fan of Hitchcock. And um, I think that he, he really was able to peg what that was all about. Um, his sense of how he's able to uh, create tension and release in his films. Uh, I mean, that's something that not a lot of guys, not a lot of directors are able to do. And uh, I think that set him apart. And it was a beautiful feature film debut. And I remember when I read the script I, uh, by Larry Cohen, I, I wept because I realized it was such a gift from him. I was just so happy to have the opportunity to read for anything, number one. Uh, I did like the script, but there really wasn't much in the script. It was a pretty, pretty much of a skeleton of a character. I mean, she's the bad girl, there's the good girl, you know. I didn't really understand what was going on because it was new to everybody. And I thought that I was a little too upstart and not quite knowing what I should do. And Brian was <laughs> very, he wanted what he wanted when he wanted it. And it was like, he, he just kind of, everybody got a little shaky because we were new. We didn't, it was the first movie for any of us. And it was like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> and he says, well, just, you know, we're gonna, you know, you're gonna be the girl, just be the girl. I read it, I really didn't get it. I, I didn't know if it was a comedy or horror movie. I, I really didn't know what it was, but we saw the movie and everyone seemed to enjoy it. But I really don't know what I saw. I didn't see him, Mama. No. Say it. I didn't see him, Mama. The first thing was intercourse. <laughs> first thing was intercourse. <laughs> first thing was intercourse. And the first thing was intercourse. I have to put the red hat on. Just in what? case, there's another, another, another opportunity. And it, it's the reason I got the job. And I walk in, there's a big desk, George Lucas on the left, Brian De Palma on the right. Didn't know either of them. Brian turned to George and said, I'll put her on my list. And then I, and he said, okay, thank you. And I went, okay. I didn't even, I said, hi. <laughs> I turned to go. Brian said, next audition, bring the hat. And I went, my red baseball hat? He said, bring the hat. It was a, a gathering of gals. I knew that. And I knew that I was a little older than they knew. <laughs> so I had to be the girl because I was a little superannuated and uh, I wasn't that young, young, young girl that I should have been. Uh, but the casting director had us all come in and uh, meet with her and then she made her selections and we kind of uh, moved up the food chain and eventually I ended up doing an audition for uh, George and uh, George Lucas and Brian De Palma who were casting simultaneously for their film Star Wars and Carrie. Uh, which I, I was lucky enough to get uh, audition on both. And Kurt Russell and I actually did an audition together on camera. Um, and I thought we were pretty darn good, too. Um, I'd like to find out why we, why we didn't get those roles. She was. I ran to the library, picked up the book. I stayed up all night, read the book, read the, the uh, script. I made notes. I wrote a biography of the character, all these things I didn't know about her. And I went to casting which was uh, in a, a small apartment on, a sh um, where was it? It was on Fountain Avenue in West Hollywood. And I was the last person of the last day of casting to read. Marsha Nassiter was an executive at United Artists. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't even know that she was an executive in the movie business, but I knew her several years before. And they were looking for someone, and she suggested my name to Brian. He said, oh, she's too young. I just saw her in The Hustler. She said, Brian, The Hustler was 15 years ago. He said, oh, so on the basis, he, he uh, asked to see me. And you know, they say, uh, I think it's Scott Fitzgerald said, there are no second acts. But Marsha was responsible for giving me my second act because after the 15 year period, I, I never stopped working. And we rehearsed for two weeks in an apartment down on Fairfax, 
um, that it was really fun, and there were like seven of us making our feature film uh, debuts. Uh, Sissy Hit was already, you know, a film actress, and John, Devol Tra John Travolta was making his film debut, and PJ Souls, Nancy Allen, um, Billy Cat, Amy Irving. There were a number of us, and it was it had a very exciting. We were all very excited about the movie and excited to work with Brian. Sissy uh, would drive me around in the Hollywood Hills and show me around Hollywood and I remember one afternoon we went to Sally Kellerman's house and had lunch and I was so excited to meet Sally Kellerman. Sissy was this bright light when we started shooting, you know, she had all that beautiful long blonde hair and she, when you would arrive on the set she would be there with her cup of herbal tea and bouncing around, you know, saying hello to everybody, greeting everybody. She was just this warm singular presence and um, I remember adoring her, and it was it was just great fun. He, Brian knew that I was an acting teacher, um, and he used me in the film to do off-camera work for some of the other uh, people, and he would say to me, you know, uh, I want this response, and I want you to provoke them into this emotional response, and so that was fun, getting to work with him along those lines. Come on, you hot shots! I can't get away with this. I'm gonna get her. Let her go, Chris. I totally got who she was. I went to high school a few years before. I was in my 20s at this point, so I had a bit of a perspective on what it's like to be a teenager and, you know, and to have those kind of um, heightened emotional feelings about things. I don't know. I just kind of, I, I was just kind of me. And when when I was approaching the role, uh, when when we were getting ready to do the film, I, I, um, I, I looked at all my, uh, the guys that I, uh, you know, knew in high school, and how they conducted themselves, the football stars and whatnot. I was not that. I mean, I was I was hanging out in the in the music rooms and and surfing, and I was not not an athlete in, in high school whatsoever. Uh, but there was a certain um, swagger and self-confidence about these characters, these guys. And I just tried to emulate that and bring that to, uh, to bear in the, in, the, in the film. And Brian liked it, you know. Um, well, I think what I was able to bring to Norma was uh, a playfulness and a, uh, the, you know, the, uh, to show what it's like when you're you're not the lead girl you're the in, in terms of in high school you're the girl that's willing to do anything just to be in favor with the hot girl which was nancy allen chris and so norma you know i i wanted her obviously because all the other girls amy irving pretty much all the other girls in the movie were hot and pretty and sexy so i was the tomboy i wanted to to bring a, a little bit of a playful spirit and uh, and I think that Norma uh, could have gone either way. She could have hung out with the really cool girls that were very nice and sweet and maybe, you know, doing uh, charity and things like that. Or she could have been swayed, which she was, to, to hang out with Nancy Allen because that was more fun and, you know, it was just uh, her playful nature. He knew that it was everybody didn't know anything because we were new people. And, and he just said, we're going to, you know, well, just go here, go there, you know, take care, don't be upset, and, and everything seemed to be fine. He was lovely. He was a perfect director for me. He told me nothing. He, he just sort of let me go. And when I had an idea, and I told him about it, and it was easy for me to share with him, even things that seemed a little weird. Before we shot the scene where I killed Carrie, uh, I had an idea that my death, oh, when she kills me, uh, that my death should not be an agonizing one of pain, that it would be ecstatic, because it was really what, what Margaret wanted, you know, see her savior and, uh, for herself and her daughter. And so I thought I would just go all the way with it. And be, um, and I told my, Brian my idea, and he said, oh, okay, give it a try. Because that's nice, because it, I always hate that feeling that a director's going to interrupt you right in the middle. 
And so it's lovely to feel that you've got the freedom to do that. I think with a good director like Brian, and I could name a few others, that you, you do have to absolutely, completely trust who's holding all of this together. Um, I like having a strong director. I like being directed. I like the collaborative. Well, I have an idea. Oh, okay, try it. Let's see, you know, this sort of thing, uh, which Brian did, and, and uh, as did Spielberg and Zemeckis, and all, all, the, all really all the good ones. And um, I, um, yeah, I think for the most part, you just have to trust. You have to be ready to jump off that cliff. Otherwise, I think, you know, if you don't trust, then you're always going to be holding something back and never fully giving into the character or the scene and you know then why have a director at all why not just direct yourself and that usually doesn't work out very well there was kind of a feeling around town that this was going to be his breakout film and, I, and obviously it was it was a, a seminal film in his career <laughs> was uh, ready, you know, for any of us to be doing it. And he wanted just, he was, he was very calm about everything. He didn't make it everybody crazy or uh, not knowing what to, to do. And it, w it was just really calm. And he knew exactly how to do that. And then, you know, we were out in the boonies out there running around and it was like, okay, I guess I'm in the movies. <laughs> Brian had um, a vision uh, for how everybody was going to die. Again, it wasn't in the script because Nora wasn't in the script. The way Betty Buckley, the gym teacher, died wasn't in the script. My death scene in the movie, uh, there was this basketball backboard that was this contraption that they had built um, and it was this big thing and it was on a pendulum and then there was about a foot and a half of balsa wood. So the idea was the pendulum would come down and smash against the, the, it, the wall, but the balsa wood would break against my body or my character's body. And, um, but they hadn't tested it, so they didn't know for sure. And then afterwards she said, oh my God, he thought of the most disgusting way to kill my character. I can't believe that's what he had in mind. He was probably dreaming of it. The terror and the screaming that you're hearing in the movie is absolutely for real. I wasn't acting at all. Then they inserted my stunt double um, who was dressed like me and had a wig like me and everything. And she takes the hit in a, cup, in a shot. And then they reinsert me for the close up and she, he, Brian said to me, watch what her physicality is when she takes the hit, and then you mimic that in the close-up. And so I had this like mouthful of uh, movie blood, you know, and uh, I'm supposed to like vomit the blood out after it smashes me and, you know, imitating her physicality and screaming. And so we did several um, takes of that, and he's telling me to, uh, his direction was classic. I, this is like classic Brian De Palma. He said, I want you to squirm like a bug on a pin. What a lot of people don't know is that the actual soundstage itself caught fire. And so, uh, uh, so the, uh, the AD is, 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 is yelling for people to get out and, and uh, Brian is, uh, is, is yelling, keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs> did one take on that. That was only one take. Someone was on a big ladder behind me and they dropped the bucket on the take. We only did one take and I said, Brian, you want me to do it again? And, and here's confidence for you. He said, no, we got it. And then I ended up spending a, you know, a week laying on the ground. I guess he wanted me to, you know, get batted around with the fire hose, but the fire uh, chief, who was really from the fire department, said it's very dangerous to put the fire hose on full force. I, I really don't want to do it. And Brian's like, no, no, we have to have it look real. I want a full force of water coming out. When I turned my head, it was so strong, full force went into my ear and just instant pain. And that's the last shot you see is actually my eardrum uh, bursting which you lose your sense of equilibrium and I just slid down like that so 
No acting involved. Complete pain. The period's not up, Harginson. It is for me. Keep running. Well, there are ten minutes left. Stick them up your... <gasps> and having to slap poor Nancy Allen, who's the sweetest girl, you know. And he, But she played Chris, the tough girl, and um, he says, I want you to really slap her. And I was like, Brian, you know, we can just, like, fake the slap. And he's like, no, I want a real slap. And sweet Nancy was like, go ahead, you know. She really wanted to get this really truthful performance. She slaps me. <sighs> Didn't end there. He wanted it more, you know. So uh, we ended up that <laughs> afternoon, I slapped her, I think, about 12 times. She slapped me 29 times times. I went to Nancy and I just whispered, I said, listen, you're ducking the blow, so just let's get this over with. Just try to like be stalwart, you know, let's get you know. So that last take, she didn't duck the blow and, you know, I slapped her really hard. So that's for real. <laughs> they put a steel vest on me and little blocks of wood where the knives and the kitchen instruments would hit me. And, it, and attached to the little blocks of wood was wire, 15 feet or so, would go through a hole in my gown. At the other end of that wire was the prop man would be attaching a can opener or whatever. Um, and then they would and shoot, and the, the, the instrument, whatever, would make a little journey down the string, the wire. It, it was comical to watch it. Uh, it was just sort of du, 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 slowly coming out. It was very difficult to keep a straight face and to be prepared to cry out in agony when it hit me. Brian has a, a, an energy and a clarity and a freshness uh, that he brings and brings to all of his actors. Uh, it's lovely. I was happy. I was just happy to be there and I wanted everybody to have fun like I was having fun because it was all new to me. There's other girls, you know, who had already been in movies and, and so I didn't want to be stupid but I was fascinated. I just was everywhere looking, see, there, no, oh, look at that. How do they do that? You know, it was, it was me getting to be in a movie. I don't know, you know, it's like I used to think, except for the golden days of Hollywood where a handful of people worked all the time, you know, it was wonderful to get the opportunity to, to work that much in film. Um, and so I think through that process, I learned to act to become a better actress. You know, one thing leads to another, and yes, I would say absolutely Carrie started it all. And it still holds up today. I mean, <clears throat> when you look at it, the way it was shot and his, uh, his camera angles and the, the, the composition and the structure of the film, I mean, I, I just think it was, a, Brian did a, a wonderful job with it. That's the funny thing about all this stuff, is everybody's, it's like Rashomon, what really happened? I don't know. <laughs>